In all of ancient Greece, Athens was a center of philosophy, knowledge, and culture. The home of Socrates, Pericles, Plato, the cradle of Western civilization, and democracy. Focusing on the Golden Age in the 5th century BC, let's examine the everyday life of a citizen in Athens. Ancient Greeks were a very unique society. While rational and science-oriented, they were at the same time religious and very superstitious, which was more than common for the time period. This divide in culture greatly shaped them, and Athens was the perfect representation of it. Around 450 BC, Athens is the richest city in all of Greece. After having defeated the biggest threat to their existence, the Persian Empire, Athens developed a large navy, essentially dominating the known seas. The Delian League was formed, a defensive alliance with most other city-states. This greatly increased trade and wealth, however, what really grew Athens was the funds it extracted from this association. Initially, the contributions were supposed to be used for defense of the entire league, but Athens ended up using much of the resources for their own expansion, which essentially created their golden age. All this newfound wealth and not having to worry about survival sparked the unique development in Athens. As the city expanded, so did its democracy, science, arts, and philosophy. An Athenian citizen and enjoyed rights never before seen, a lot of them received a public payroll, and their biggest concern was matters of state, which is what took up a large part of their day. Athenians at the time were a very collectivist society, and only a century or two later would ideas such as personal happiness as a priority arise. During the Golden Age, the welfare of the state was the main concern. Most of the citizens would constantly discuss and vote on all public matters from foreign policy to local government and individual punishment. However, this wasn't exactly a dreamlike utopia as there were heavy differences within the Athenian society. Only the sons of an Athenian father, and later the mother as well, were granted citizenship, although foreigners were able to attain it with enough support. At the same time, Greeks practiced ostracism, exile, as well as stripping of the civic rights generally based on voting. So while you could gain citizenship, you could also lose it as well. Slaves were a large part of their society and they had essentially zero rights depending much on the will of their masters. How they were treated was different from case to case basis. Generally, they would do most of the manual labor, but even bankers were sometimes slaves and other administrative workers. Being a slave was also not permanent in Greek society and often they were able to buy their own freedom. In parallel to this, there were also very large differences in gender, and the role of free women was mainly to bear children. Even the leader Pericles on one occasion said, a woman's reputation is highest when men say little about her, whether it be good or evil. Women were supposed to not leave the house often, and if they did, it was mainly for house duties and chores. Her main responsibility was the household and the health of its members. They often married very young, from 12 to 20, to usually much older men. Marriage was generally arranged, and it was mainly an economic union and not really an endeavor of love. All the voting, democracy, and benefits were generally left to men. In terms of culture, Athens was very much a city, not unlike a modern one. There was the theater, very influential, popular, and endorsed by Pericles at the time. It had shaped public opinion in a significant way and would sometimes work for the government, but also often against it. There were markets where trade was made possible, not just from Greece but from various parts of the known world at the time, as the city had the naval capability and the wealth that they even imported a lot of their food. There was even a nightlife and drink parties where men would gather for drinking, entertainment, and discussion, although this was mainly an outlet for the rich, not really the general peasants. In the Agora, the Greek forum, entertainment was constant with various types of performers, such as jugglers, dancers, and mimes. Games were popular and were a large part of Greek life, Boys would usually play games with a ball, hoops, hopscotch, and even had their own version of the yo-yo. The adults would also play similar versions but were known to play dice as well as other board game types. Hunting, aside from food, was seen as a sport and was usually practiced by the more well-off citizens, although the land around Athens weren't particularly rich with game. However, what Athens as well as most Greece was rich in was fish, making fishing a very popular profession as well as a pastime. When 
it comes to education, it was an important aspect of the Athenian citizenship. Mainly focused on creating soldiers, but the boys were also taught how to read, write, and even learned about mathematics and music. While matters of the state were important, politics, as in being government officials, were generally ambitions of the rich, those that could afford to spend most of their time thinking. This gave rise to the sophists, specialized teachers focusing on many subjects, but mainly philosophy and rhetoric. Many paid for such services in order to become better speakers, as in ancient Athens, being well spoken was of crucial significance. This was often criticized as those that spoke best could get themselves out of answering for their crimes or arguing positions which were ultimately bad for the society as a whole. In terms of physical development, there were a lot of systems in place. Greeks, in particular, highly valued valued health, physical aesthetics, and athleticism. Men exercise often and practice activities such as boxing, wrestling, jumping, and gymnastics. Military service was mandatory, so learning warfare and how to bear arms was a significant part of their culture. Due to their intense physical education and generally a moderate appetite in Athens, many of the boys were athletes and physically capable. As a result of this culture, sports were a large part of their society in various disciplines, which is ultimately connected to the ancient Olympic Games. Now, while all of this might seem just like a regular thing for the modern world, at the time, the Athenian lifestyle was revolutionary. Ultimately, the Golden Age of Athens would end with a fall against Sparta and subsequently against the Romans. Nonetheless, the Athenian way of life shaped our life in such a significant way that most modern thought could be traced back to it. Thank you for watching. Check out my Spartacle apps by clicking on the screen and also check out our Instagram page for daily facts on history and science. See you next time.